Hi everybody, I'm Jim. Welcome to Great Books, Big Ideas. I thought it would be enough time for another Friday Reads. It's Friday, May 3rd, so this is going to be a short video about a couple of little library finds that I found not so long ago, and I started to read them. Not done them yet. No books finished this week, but it was a pretty momentous week, something I'll talk about in another video. Anyway, I would say two, three weeks, maybe three weeks ago, I was on one of my long morning walks and I was hitting the little libraries around Westchester and I found this book by Steve Martin called Shop Girl. It was a New York Times bestseller and it came out, I did not I did not know anything about this book. Uh, when it came out. It came out in uh, the year 2000. And I'll read you a little bit about the book uh, and tell you about, I'm 55 pages in to it, and it's not, a, it's a more of a novella, uh, really. It's, it's only 130 pages. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in a sec, uh, how I've been reading it. But anyway, here's, here's some blurbage for you. In this beautifully written, poignant novella, a phenomenal bestseller in hardcover, Steve Martin shows why he has quickly become recognized as a gorgeous writer capable of being at once melancholy and tart, achingly innocent and astonishingly ironic. And here is some premise for, of the book. Mirabelle is the shop girl of the title, a young woman beautiful in a wallflower-ish kind of way who works behind the glove counter at Neiman Marcus, selling things that nobody buys anymore. Mirabelle captures the attention of Ray Porter, a wealthy businessman almost twice her age. As they tentatively embark on a relationship, they struggle to decipher the language of love with consequences that are both comic and heartbreaking, filled with the kind of witty, discerning observations that have brought Steve Martin critical success. Shop Girl is a work of disarming tenderness. And yes, it's that Steve Martin, the actor comedian Steve Martin. Now, I go way back with Steve Martin. Uh, you know, I was at the perfect age for his comedy albums. I was in junior high school, I think, and uh, Let's Get Small and all those. I had all three of those comedy albums. I even bought the single of King Tut. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, and The Jerk came out. His, I think that was his first film. And then he wrote a, he wrote a book um, that I bought in junior high called Cruel Shoes. Does anyone remember that? Which was a, a quirky little thing. It was sort of almost like little comic snippets, like where he's kind of crossing over from stand-up comedy into more like, um, I don't know what you would call it, sort of like experimental absurdist kind of humor and uh, you know oddball stuff. And that really struck me as a kid. You know, I was, again, the perfect age to be smitten with that, with that book. But knew nothing about this book. I didn't know he was, like, he's written other books, too, apparently. So um, he's written a play, and uh, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, you know, worked on films and whatnot. Anyway, I started reading this right away. And I, I plowed right through up to page 55, and I was loving it. I just was, like, very taken in by the writing, and um, it, it's very lucid. It's like a clean prose line. It evokes the sort of Los Angeles, Beverly Hills area kind of uh, ethos. And um, I was I – was, really attached to Mirabelle, the character, and now the guy is, like, coming into the picture, and you can, you know, he's asked her out for a date and everything. I won't give much away yet. I've not finished the book. But uh, loved it so far. You know, I, I don't know how it's going to end. And I'm, I was, it was one of these things where it's like, oh, I'm going to get this through this book in a day, like two days at most. And then I put it in my backpack, 
because there was I was going to work and I think I was anticipating having like a slow day and at work and I would have some office hour time where I maybe could like sneak a few more pages in but the problem is it got buried in the backpack and I forgot about it and <laughs> so I didn't finish it and now it's like two or three weeks later but now I have recovered it from the backpack and I will Put it by the bed and I will try to finish it really soon. So I will have more to say about this book once I finish it because I guarantee you I will finish it. I'm, I'm hooked on the story. I'm really liking it so far. All right. Now, I guess this next book would, would qualify as a guilty pleasure type thing. I found this in the little library, The Rebels by John Jakes, volume two in the American Bicentennial series. These mass market paperback uh, historical fiction novels, these were ubiquitous in the 70s and 80s. I mean, these were always on the racks. And uh, I'll read you a little bit about this. So here's what our blurb says. The bold glittering saga of our America and the people who made her great. Huh. America made great. Hmm. <laughs> Hasn't worn well, that phrase. Beginning with a ragtag group of Continental soldiers awaiting the British charge on Breed's Hill and sweeping across the luminous fabric of our nation's earliest war-torn years, The Rebels continues the passionate chronicles of Philip Kent, patriot soldier and the colorful array of men and women, both famous and unknown, whose destiny propelled them into the epic struggle for American independence. The Rebels captures for all time the valor and turmoil of the revolution as seen through the eyes of young Philip Kent and the reader shares his struggles, his courage, and his loves in this tempestuous saga of American heroism, spirited romance, and rousing adventure. The Rebels. Yes. So these are very recognizable covers to me. And here are the other uh, volumes in the series. Now, if memory serves, I've read at least one of these volumes because here's my memory, and it's pretty dim because it was so long ago. But my dad would read historical fiction sometimes, and sometimes my mom would too, I think. But my dad was going through like a, a James Michener phase. I remember he read Chesapeake, and then he read Poland, and maybe one other. And... Uh, I think he was reading these John Jakes books too. I, I, I don't remember for sure. Or maybe it was me. Or maybe he was reading some of them and then I might have read. I have a memory of maybe reading one of them. I, it might have been the first one. Or maybe they were just part of the milieu back then and I think I read them. But I couldn't resist grabbing this out of a, a little free library It'd be just for the hell of it. It's, this will not be a keeper. I have started to read it. I'm about 48 pages in. It's super, super easy to read. It is uh, very soap opera-ish. Uh, it's like watching television. I think they made this into a miniseries um, and, or films. And you can see how easily it would translate into those formats. Um, but it's kind of fun, you know. Uh, in the second chapter or so, it got to a real cheesy sex scene that was very cliche and you know I think you you know you can't have high expectations for this kind of stuff but I do like history I like the history of the American Revolution and you know I'm just gonna have some fun with this like summer is approaching and I think this will not take me long to read uh, and when I want something lightweight that's just kind of gonna flow easy I'll probably reach for this I'll probably have more to say about this once I finish it but Anyway, if you have any comments about these two books, Shop Girl by Steve Martin or The Rebels by John Jakes, please leave a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts of it. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you be become a subscriber. Thanks for watching.